Hey everybody, uh, welcome to our first ever webinar. Uh, I'm Chris Howard with Ice Hockey Systems. Um, coming from Chicago, Illinois. We got uh, Dennis Savard here. Um, just a little overview of what we're gonna do today. Um, Dennis is gonna give you a little tour of his office here in Chicago. Gonna go over some really great stuff on the whiteboard, some breakouts, some power play breakouts, couple drills for you guys. Um, I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, and then we're gonna just do a quick demo of Ice Hockey Systems and Blueprint, which is our new organizational platform, which we're really excited about. And then uh, Dennis is gonna answer some questions at the end. So uh, feel free to, to send some questions in. You can do it in the Google Hangout. Um, just send them our way and Dennis will answer them at the end. And then we're gonna give away $1,000 to somebody on the webinar. So thanks again for taking time out of your busy day. Um, I think it's gonna be worth your while. So uh, without further ado, one of the best players in NHL history, one of the most exciting players to watch, Hall of Famer and uh, coach, uh, former coach of the Blackhawks, Dennis Savard. Chris, thank you. Sure. Welcome, everybody. First thing I want to show you is this beautiful piece of work here. <laughs> I think you guys know what that is, uh, 2015 Stanley Cup. Great ownership by Rocky Wirtz, obviously, and our president, John McDonough. Very, very generous people. So hope you see it good. Enjoy it because it's going away now. <laughs> so welcome. You know, we're going to have a good time. I'm going to go over some stuff for you guys. But the first thing I want you guys to look around here is my office uh, down in Chicago. There's some uh, memorabilia that uh, no, not many people will get to see. You guys will get to see that today. So follow me around here. First thing um, that we have, when you look at this, obviously, you know, the first team I've ever played for was the Blackhawks. And look, my first organized team I played as a young boy was this uniform that we were here as a, as, as a young boy when I was six years old. So good omen, good sign. <laughs> <laughs> this over here is a uh, – Part of when I got inducted to Hockey Hall of Fame, uh, they give you stats on your career. Pretty nice piece that uh, always kept. Now, this next piece I'm going to show you guys is that tells me how old I am now. You look at some of those trophies, 1978, 1973 up on top. Um, yeah, getting up there. But I uh, still feel good. No introduction for this. Stanley Cup jersey, 1992-93. Um you know, it's a great piece that I've kept, obviously, and uh, very honored uh, to have won the cup. This is my 1,000-point uh, jersey. It was against the St. Louis Blues. I uh, was able to defend my left winger at LC Cord, who took care of me throughout his whole career. Uh, this was my 1,000-point jersey. Uh, this was my 1,000-game jersey. Uh, you guys didn't know I played for Tampa. I did. So great organization as well. They're having a lot of success right now. Unfortunately for them, last year the Hawks uh, were able to take them down the Stanley Cup. But good young team coming up. And the most important piece is an athlete, obviously, is the replica of the Stanley Cup. They keep here in my office. And, uh, yeah, pretty special time. So let's go. Let's get to the board. First of all, uh, one of the things that I've always wanted to talk about is – Breakouts. You know, breakouts are important. The fact that if you can't break out of your own end, you won't be able to get offense. So these are the things I strongly suggest to, to you ladies and you gentlemen to, to work on, not uh, once a week. Anytime you get a chance to practice, it should be more of a, I'll get to the drill about this, but it should be like kind of a warm-up drill. Same time, you're working on breaking out of your own end. If you can't break out of your own end, obviously we all know the rules here. You won't be able to play some offense. So here's a couple of things that you should, should know. Breakouts, one very key rule that's very important that I really emphasize strongly for you guys to talk about is how we come back into our own end. First of all, your sentiment has to come down the middle of the ice, nice and low. That's a big key. Second thing, your wingers have to come through the dots, and I'll tell you why in a second here, as they come in their own end. Now, the, the, the defensemen, anytime they go back for pucks, okay, if the pucks happen to be dumped in this area, you have to always have shoulder checks. So you start to pivot, you, you're looking back, you're going back for your puck. Obviously, you know, you need to have shoulder check to see who's coming, where the four, check, four checkers are coming from. So it's very important as you, a defenseman, as you back up and start to go back your own end, make sure you look shoulder check at all time. Now, 
here's a couple breakouts. Again, these are going to be an animation for you within the week. So D wheel to center. When I say centerman, wheel D will wheel the puck right. And this centerman, as he comes in his zone, he has to be really low. This area in here is always open versus four check. You can't be afraid for a defenseman to make that play. It's a little four foot five, four or five foot pass that's going to be able to work for you. That's one option. Now. The reason why I say the wingers have to come back, in case we do a D, a D wheel to, to, to winger, so a D game has come back, the defenseman, obviously a winger now of coming in. This guy here, instead of going to the wall here, he might have to support his partner here. Here's the reason why I say this, because now our center's come back. He's in this area here. We've got this play. we got that little play to this winger here. And he needs support. If the if the defenseman happened to want to pitch him down here and he needs to chip it out, well, you have to have support here. It's too far for the centerman to come and try to support this play. So that's why you have to have your wingers come inside the dots. And you got to reach from there. If the puck happens to come up on this side of the ice, well, then they kind of flip this, this other side of the ice. They come over on this side. So it's very important that you emphasize to your winger to come through the dots. When you do your practice, and you see kids starting to have the habit to go to the walls right away. The defensemen are wheeling, blow the whistle. Start over the drill. Teach them that. It's very important. Um, I think it's pretty basic. So obviously, D to D. Let me go up to this way now. The next breakout that you work on is obviously D to D uh, to the winger. We talked about, we talked about D to D to center low. The other one is when the D is going back for the puck, his partner obviously came back to the front of the net, right? Now, because some teams will come will come pretty hard. Some teams four check with a 2-1-2. Two, two. So let's say we got this four checker coming. This D is vacated over here now. They'll come with the other four. The ref three will come in the middle of the ice. Their D will come down the walls. Call We call this a 2-1-2-4 two, two, check. Sometimes the Ds have to be pressured. It's going to happen. They've got to be reacting pretty quick. So if they make that little bang play, they go D to D and they keep going. Again, our wingers have come to the dots or center low. Then that's what happens. You D to D, you keep it going around. You've got your winger coming here. You obviously got your winger supporting as well. You got also, also have your center low for support. This defenseman that started the drill, that started the breakout, you don't just watch your pass. You've got to get back in front of the net for this option possibly to get the weak side Defenseman open. Hope that makes sense to you guys. You understand what I mean by that. The last one here, and again, there's a lot of breakouts. I don't want to try to overdo it for you guys. Is the D to D reverse? Okay, because sometimes the forecheck will be right on top of you. So the defenseman again has gone back for the puck, right? He's getting back for the puck. He's getting the net. He's got lots of pressure by their forechecker, really, really hard. The only play that really has either a hard rim or a reverse. And again, I suggest that we, like, we try to make direct passes on breakouts as much as possible. Sometimes you can't, that happens, but as much as possible, teach the kids to, to make direct passes. So now, as he goes back for the puck, again, his defense partner has come to the front of the net. He'll gain the far post, bring this guy to you. You reverse the puck. It's very important, too, when you reverse the puck as a defenseman, and this puck doesn't go above the red line. You need to keep it below the red line as much as possible. So your partner has come now. Again, same thing. Centers come down the middle of the ice. We've got our guys coming through the dots, our wingers, right? Now, they read the forechecker. Also, a lot of times you have to read what's going on with the situation. So if you read it, again, if you read it's going to be a reverse, pretty simple. We come back. We reverse this defenseman. Now wingers have come here. We have come over here, center is coming this way, T to D reverse, quick up, the way we go. Again, our support up on top with the wingers supporting each other is there for you. All right, hopefully that helps you. You understand what we're talking about here. Now, here's the drill I want to help you guys with. It's 5 on 0 continuous. So, coach will be down the middle with a puck, right? Gonna dump a puck in the zone, okay? Now I want you to go to these to these uh, breakouts twice at a time. So 
What happens here again, let's say we'll call the first one, you'll call D wheel to center. So again, the group has jumped up, right? You're gonna set a defenseman on the line here. Now you have your winger, you have your other winger, you have your centerman, and your three guys. Coach dumps the puck, D goes back. Yeah, same thing. You have a winger coming through the dots. We have a center low. This defenseman, this defenseman gains the net, make that little five foot pass. Now these guys break out. Now the other group has to be ready. The other line that's that's up next breaking out of this hand has to be obviously in the neutral zone. They've came up, they obviously skated to the to the blue line with the centerman and center D has skated to the red line. Right? Boom, boom, we're out of the zone. Just let's just say we went D to center. Center went to winger, winger's gonna carry it in to the red line. Again, he's gonna dump it in the corner. In an area where we can get the puck back, just pretending that we're forechecking as well. You want puck placement, that's very important. You don't want to put the puck behind the net. It's not going to work. The goalie stops it, it's an easy breakout for the opposition. So they've done the puck in. These guys, the next group, have gone out now. Same thing. We go D wheel to center to wing, back to center, depending what you're doing. The next group now have jumped in there already. The third group, as most of you guys with the kids, you have three lines. They've jumped in there. They've dumped the puck in. This group comes out and breaks out again. D wheel to center, to wing, get it in. Next group out. Go twice. You could only select maybe three, about three uh, breakouts a day when you're doing this, and go twice each group. Once that's completed and you're satisfied with the breakouts, now we're going to add a four checker into this drill. So here's how it works. Again, through animations, you guys will be able to see it better. I've never been known as an artist as far as drawing on the board, but uh, you will see to our, our system how we do that. You guys have been members. Some of you are members already with us, so you understand what we're doing. Uh, that's why we do, we started this a couple years ago, a bunch of friends of mine together uh, about the animations. I feel like this here helps you out to save probably 10, 15 minutes of practice. In the course of a season, it could be three hours of time of practices. That's a lot of time for kids. Three hours is a big, big deal for our young players. Now, here's this drill. Four checkers will be in this area here with a coach. All right? And then, please, I know that you guys got to help. You're just not the only coach on the ice. Uh, part of it is because kids forget. Let's get that straight. Even at pro level, they forget. So we always had a coach here to make sure that it's time again to get the four checker in there to go. Same thing again. Now, you do not call breakouts. You tell your, your, your team that's breaking out, the team that's breaking out, five guys are breaking out. Listen, again, defense, when you go back, shoulder check, see where the four checker is coming from, and use your options. All these options that you've worked on are going to be available for you, depending where the four checker is coming from. As far as the four checker is concerned, you just tell him do what he wants. Just let him go. Go hard, go crazy, try to get to the puck, try to, try to cause some havoc for the defenseman for breaking out or for the team that's breaking out of, the, uh, out of the zone. So now again, we're breaking out, we had a four checker that came in, forced whatever the defenseman somehow has come up, right? We had our other D here, we had our winger come through, we had our center low, we had this winger that came across, it might be just to quick up to the winger because the four checkers are right on there, our defenseman, could be this little play, that play, it doesn't matter, it's again, it's a continuous drill. You get to have your five guys ready here. And this next four checker, that's where you're there, coach, is to get this next four checker going. So when these guys get the puck, they dump it in. This four checker goes out, and four checkers, four checkers are the, the, the defenseman and the group that's coming out. Again, same thing. Now they're going to break out. Next four checker ready to go. Next group ready to break out, and it's continuous. So you add a little pressure. Uh, should be able to, to help your defenseman. Uh, again, to do that shoulder check and maybe break out of the zone uh, with more facility and more, with, with more ease, really, um, as we as they get along, as they move along here, doing this more and more often. All right, I hope that I hope you guys like this. Again, we're going to put this through animations, and hopefully, it's going to help you. You'll understand it more when you have animations out there. I know that some of the drills we put up already, you guys have uh, understood some of those good, some of those drills. Now, power play breakout. Obviously, being assistant coach for eight years, I ran a lot of the special teams as, a, as assistant coaches in the NHL. You know, you have two assistant coaches. One will run 
the power play, one would run the penalty killing. I was able to run both of them throughout my career. So and even though I haven't coached, well, how many years now? So, wait, so it's been quite a while since I've, since I've coached. I've watched games, and I think they still utilize this breakout that I was utilizing when I was coaching. Um, so most important thing, let's look at the power play breakout rules. We'll get this to you guys. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. First and most important thing when we do the power play is our defenseman that got the puck behind the net has to really jump up and try to freeze their first forechecker. Depending where he's coming from, it doesn't matter. You're going to jump up through the middle of the ice with lots of speed. The other F1 and F2 will come first. F1 will come through the dot. F2 to the outside. We'll have the other partner defenseman coming through this area in here. And our F3 will be at the far blue line out here. Here's why this guy is out here. First of all, the important thing about this is the F3 is going to come across, okay? So if they, these defensemen don't respect him, this play, that quick play to breakaways might be open. And you see this in a lot of games, in your kids' game or even the NHL level. These guys are just able to spring them loose once in a while and get on a breakaway. So that's why this guy, first one of the reasons he's there is to make sure he makes himself available for this long play. That could be there. Now, these other guys, the F1 and F2, the other D, you must time it. You cannot be up here when the puck, the defenseman's here around this area with the puck. You have to be almost parallel to the defenseman, maybe a step ahead of it, instead of the puck carrier. But no more than that. Very important. When you do your breakouts, make sure you get good timing with everybody. Now, here's the reason why this is a great breakout. Part of it is when we get to the blue line, you're going to see this in a lot of cases, right, where most teams, they play the 1-3, you're going to end up like this. They're going to end up in this position here. All right, and you, we're going to end up like so. We're going to end up with a guy in this area here, right? We're going to end up with a guy in this area here. We're going to end up with our guy going through the wall here, in this area here. And obviously this defenseman will end up in this area here. So what you want to do is you want to attack and have chains covered as you enter the zone with speed. And by that time, one of these guys will have the puck. Here's what's great about this drill and great about this, uh, this power play breakout. The whole idea is this two-on-one, these guys here. And as much as possible, you want to enter the zone carrying the puck. You know, obviously if it's a, if it's a hard rim, you know, we got to get our three guys. This guy's got to get there. This guy's got to get there. And even our forward might have to come and help out. If they got two, we need three. They got three, we need four. So I don't think that's uh, difficult for you guys to understand. But timing is very important. We want to make sure that we have four lanes covered as we enter the zone. We want a two-on-one. These guys, depending what side the puck's coming in, if it's on this side, we got two-on-one here. If it's on this side, we have a two-on-one here. From there, you work your place. That may be later on we could show you some setup. But for today, all we're doing is working on some of the power play breakouts. Obviously, some breakouts, five on five, we'll break on our, our, of our own end. Um, hope that helps you. Again, through animations, you'll be able to see a lot more of this. I'm glad I'm here to help you guys. Uh, very honored, by, by matter of fact, to be here. I know we have some ladies on board here and listen to this show today. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Chris. All right. Do you want to show them the power play drill? Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Hey, I need help. <laughs> Good idea. So here's here's one of the things that we're talking about. You know, I've been telling this, Chris, and, you know, I, I don't see this in too many places. And maybe, maybe you guys have seen it. I don't know. But something that I've always kept in mind that, you know, you have, you have it in the course of the season, especially early in the season, you have a lot of practice games, right? So where you play a team that's not really uh, in your division or in your, in your conference or in your league. So once in a while, during the course of, of a season, when you have some practice game, try to do a practice game with special teams. I think it would be a great thing to do. Special teams, folks, are very important. We all know that. And until you have repetition, until you do it 
with with uh, resistance, you know, it's it's very difficult to get better at. So, if you have, um, I'm just giving an example in our practice. You could do first of all, you're always going to warm up kids at the start. Warm up the goalies. Take 10 minutes to do that stuff. Then they'll allow you 25 minutes for each team to play the power play or the penalty kill, and you make it a game out of it. I think it's very constructive. I think it's a lot of fun. It's something different that the kids have never done before. I'm pretty sure if they have, great, because I think it's a good thing to do. So, you know, let's say this team on the, would be on the power play for the first 25 minutes. Obviously, this team will be killing, and it's obviously just like a regular game. And you make it a game. The team that scores the most goal wins the game. So basically, there's no other, other way to look at that. Now, here's a drill for you guys. Hopefully you get that done. Think about this. I mean, I'm sure you got friends coaching other kids, you know, that, that are, would be willing to do that. I think it's a great idea because, again, hey, first of all, you got to be able to skate. You got to be able to pass and play the game of hockey. But these things here, these are the things that, that we don't think about are working. You know, the younger they work at this, the better they're going to get as they get older. And, you know, some guys make a lot of money playing the power play in the NHL. Just think about that for a second. So here's the drill for you. I'm just going to place five guys just like so. Okay, and I'll put four penalty killers. Hopefully the colors are working for you. So we'll have a defenseman, defenseman, forward, and a forward. Now, these guys will play five on four. Chris is the blue. Black guys will play the blue guys. Five on four, they'll play live. So the, the, when the defenders get the puck, they send it back in this end here, where again, versus defenders. It's continuous. Again, you make a game out of this. You know, this team here, they're going to play versus this team, this penalty killing team versus this team, and eventually you could flip them over at some point. But they play five on four, the penalty killers get the puck, they throw it down all the way down to the other end. Now this black team here battles for the puck. They try to score. Blue team gets it back, send it back down to these guys. It's continuous. So you create a little game. I think kids like it. I know for a fact that when I was coaching, I did this drill. It was a lot of fun for the guys. And I made it, you know, winner doesn't skate. The loser's got to skate. Got to make something valuable for this kind of game. So, hey, thank you for listening. And, um, We'll see you soon again and again. Thank you for being part of our family here. Uh, we've enjoyed helping you guys out. Hopefully this uh, today uh, helped you out. Chris. All right. Yeah, thank you so much, Dennis. I hope everybody uh, enjoyed that really great stuff from Dennis. So um, real quick, I'm just going to share my screen with everybody, and we're just going to do a really quick demo of uh, ice hockey systems. So um, – for those of you that don't know, also a reminder to please, uh, if you have any questions for Dennis at all, please send them in. You can submit questions through the Google Hangout. Uh, you can leave comments on the YouTube page. Either way, we'll, we'll try to get to the questions of Dennis. He's going to be coming back in about another 10 minutes or so um, to answer some of those questions, and then we're going to give away uh, the $1,000. So, um, you know, feel free to, we encourage you guys to ask some questions um, about anything that, that you'd like Dennis to answer. So, um, so yeah, I'm just going to go over a quick demo of Ice Hockey Systems. Just for those of you who don't know, it's an online coaching resource. Um, we have over 500 animated hockey drills systems. We have over 40 coaching videos with Dennis Savard. So if you liked what you saw with Dennis, uh, there's plenty more on our site. Um, but I'm just going to give you guys a quick little demo. Um, all of our drills, as you can see, they're animated, which really helps players and coaches understand what to do. And you can view these on your mobile devices, your tablet, your laptop. You can bring your tablet on the ice to show the drills to, to your boys or girls. Um, and so there's over 500, which sounds a little overwhelming. But we, have a, we, we found actually a really nice way to organize all of our drills. Um, so as you can see along the left hand side, you can pick what age level. So some of the stuff today uh, might be a little advanced that we've been doing, but if you're looking for stuff for mites, for squirts, we got all that stuff on here. So you can pick the age level and it kind of just drills everything down. You can pick full ice practices and then you can even go more in depth there. So if you want to work on some transition drills, 
for Bantams, that's what I did, and it gives you all the search results, which is really great. And then all these drills, um, all these drills are animated, so you can just click on it, and uh, the drill goes in there. The other thing that you can do when you're browsing through the drills, um, you can save them into certain lists. So as you see down here, I'm gonna like this drill. I'm gonna put it as a favorite. Um, there's a lot of passing involved, so I'm gonna flag it as a passing drill. If it's a drill you like, you can tag it any which way. And then I'll show you guys just in a little bit, you'll be able to access this drill again. So it's a really good way to kind of organize the drills when you're browsing through you know, the, the 500 plus drills. Um, you can really flag the ones that you like and you think will be good and relevant for your team. So it's really nice. Um, the other thing we can do is, so as you can see along the left here, these are all practices that I've created. Um, I'm gonna show you the dashboard in a little bit, but you can create practices here. As you can see, I, I always like to, this is one thing um, I've noticed with coaches is a lot of times they go from drill to drill to drill that have, they really have nothing to do with each other. Um, so one thing I, I'm trying to preach, and I know a lot of people out there are, is to have progressions and make sure all the drills kind of um, kind of flow together and, and make sense together. Um, and, and, you know, you want like an end goal from a practice. You don't want to just bounce from drill to drill. Don't put a time limit on a drill. You never want to cap off a drill um, if, if, the, if the players aren't understanding it. So that's the one thing. You can see I have just different – practices here. If you find a drill that you like, all you have to do is click add and that drill gets added to that practice. So um, we added to the transition practice. You go to that practice and you can see that that is now the neutral zone. Um, offensive swing is now added to that practice. So just a, a kind of cool little thing. It's super easy to create practices and add drills. Um, we also have systems on here. Here's just an, an example of a system we have. It shows uh, the players and the puck moving, gives a little breakdown, which is really nice. We have over 40 different types of systems, um, power plays, penalty kills. You can see all the system categories down here, um, so you can search for those too. So check those out. Um, we also have here the videos with uh, Dennis. Um, really, really great stuff. Um, similar to what you saw today, some go more in depth and covers a wide, wide range of uh, topics. So definitely check those out. We have some off-ice training that we filmed with uh, Ben Eves as well. Um, so some really good, simple um, off-ice workouts um, that are good. And then we have our blog where you can check out different articles. So the last thing I want to show you real quick is the dashboard. Um, if you become a member, this is where you can add a practice right there. This is where you keep your drills organized. So I'll click on my drill list. These are the drills I've favorited. These are the liked ones, passing ones. So any drills that you tag funnel into your dashboard, which is really cool. So it gives you um, a good way to keep your, your drills organized. So that's pretty much, there's way more I can go over. I can spend an hour demoing ice hockey systems. There's a lot of stuff, but I think it's a really great site. I think you guys will enjoy it. Um, I'm gonna pass it over to Nil Satterstrom, who's also with ice hockey systems. Um, he's going to go over a new organizational platform called Blueprint. It's just going to take a few minutes. It's a really great platform. It brings everything that we have on ice hockey systems. It allows your organization to put it on their own website and gives all their coaches access. The director can log in and recommend drills to different coaches. Your team can log in and see practices. It's really a great recruiting tool to show um, you know, players and parents you're trying to get them to your program. You know, it's right on your website, all of our content, all the practices. So it's really cool. So um, I'm going to throw it over to Nils, and we'll be back. Make sure you get those questions in for Dennis, and uh, we'll be back in a little bit to answer those questions. And um, I'll hand it over to Nils. Okay, thanks, Chris. Uh, nice job there, guys. So, uh, again, my name is Nils Satterstrom. I'm going to go over with you guys uh, – the blueprint platform uh, geared for your youth hockey organization. Um, as Chris mentioned, the, the thing that separates blueprint from ice hockey systems is the role of a director. Uh, so what we've done is the role of a director can now, uh, you know, recommend and push content uh, to uh, coaches within the organization. So on my screen here, uh, I'm going to go through a brief demo here. Uh, it'll take about five minutes, and then we'll we'll get back to those guys. So I'm going to log in as a director, and let's see. 
we're going to start off by going to uh, my practices. And as a director, um, what I've done is I've gone in, I've, I've created eight practices geared towards particular age levels. So uh, we'll take a look at this mite stations number two practice. And you'll notice that we have, uh, because this is IHS content, uh, the animations are included with the diagrams. And when it's ready to be pushed out to my coaches, I can just uh, click a button up here at the top. I'll click this mites button. Uh, and what that does is it pushes it to the R content section. So if I go over here to R content, click on practices, you'll see all the practices that are available to the coaches within the organization. And now I can filter it by mite practices. And you'll we'll see this mite stations number two practice. Um, so now what I'll do, I'm going to switch over to a new window. And in this window, I'm logged in as a coach within that organization. And if I go over here to our content and scroll down to practices, uh, you'll notice that you'll see all the practices recommended by the director. And uh, in this situation, uh, I'm a mite coach, so I'll, I'll filter by mites. And I'll see the mite practices that have been recommended by the director. So I'll click on it, uh, review the content. And now what I can do, uh, the next step is uh, to share it with my team. And every coach has the ability to set up a team login. So when I share it with my team, what happens then is then when anybody with that login logs in, uh, they're able to, to view the content I've shared. So if I, I'm going to open up a new window now. Uh, this window, I'm logged in as a team member using uh, our team login. And we'll see that this Might Stations number two practice is listed here now. So if I click it, uh, now I see uh, all the content, uh, the diagram animations um and i think you know as you can see that this would be very helpful as an assistant coach i can log in now go to practice uh very well prepared you know know what's on on uh on the docket for the night's practice so um i'm going to go back now to uh the coaches login and there's one thing I want to make clear here with a as a coach when I log in I'm not just restricted to content that's been recommended by the director. Um, I can I have the ability to create my own drills, uh, my own systems and exercises, uh, create my own practices, and I can add my own drills into the practices and you know then share those practices with the team as well. So. You're not just restricted to content that's been pushed down from the director. Um, so, anyways, that's kind of a that's a brief overview of what uh, Blueprint is capable of. Um, again, the, the whole idea behind Blueprint is is to improve the quality of ice time for our players. Uh, hopefully, as coaches, we can go to the rink. You know, we're a little bit more organized, um, and we can be confident that the content we're providing is in line with you know what our director wants us to do so um again that's uh that's blueprint in a nutshell um i'm gonna wrap it up now and send it back to dennis and chris uh, and be sure you know if you have any questions uh by all means feel free to post them so uh guys feel free to take it away all right sounds good thanks nils um so yeah, just just to clarify a couple of things on Blueprint. It's I think it's a really great tool. If you're a coach in a fairly large organization um, and you guys want this in your organization, definitely bring it to your director. Um, we're given a $500 referral fee for anybody that refers this to their program and they actually buy Blueprint. Uh, Blueprint is $2,500 per year. That includes setup, everything. It goes right on your organization's website, which is really cool. Great recruiting tool. 
gets all your coaches on the same page and keeps all your content kind of organized and, you know, gets your players saving time on the ice. They see practice before they go. So definitely check that out. If you're just an individual coach or you have a small group of teams, uh, we definitely recommend ice hockey systems. It's only $59 per year, or if you want to just do monthly, $14 a month. Gives you access to all the content. You can still build practices. So definitely check that stuff out. Um, and, and uh, you know, any questions, let me know. Um, we had a few questions, um, full, you know, come in. One of them is we're going to bring Savvy back in. Somebody asked if the webinar is going to be available for viewing on a later date. And it definitely is. We're going to post it to our website. So if you missed anything or want to review anything, it's going to be on Ice Hockey Systems probably even later today. And we'll email you a link to the copied webinar. Um, but so one of the first questions that came in was from uh, Jesse. Um, Jesse asked, on the power play breakout that Dennis went over, um, the D that steps out from behind the net, should he be on his forehand with the two forwards on his forehand side um, with his partner on his backhand side? So. Great question. Absolutely. You know, something I should have mentioned to you guys, if we're going to detail out everything to a T, absolutely. So if you're coming up on this side of the ice, I know I've put, I've put some drawing is, but if you're coming up on this side of the ice here, you prefer a righty to carry the puck up, right? And obviously here you're going to have a lefty, lefty. Uh, that's going to come up this side of the ice. And obviously uh, on this side you'll have a lefty. Be, you like to have as much as possible everybody on their forehands. Easier to pick up a pass. Well, that's why you guys do drills. When you do a drill, everybody has to be able to receive pass on their backhands or forehands. So, yes, I strongly suggest that it's a righty, so it's an easier forehand pass to be made to those forwards. Great question. All right, great. So we had another question coming in from Ken, and he was just wondering, Dennis, if you had any wisdom on uh, penalty kills. Yeah, so, again, you know, I could be here a long, long time for you guys. Here's, here's a – I just – Put this on the board really quick up here. You know, again, it's very difficult in a short period of time to explain to you how a penalty killing should be run. But depending, again, how teams, how, how teams really put their power play together is just pretty much how you're going to penalty kill. But at the same time, you have to have a system. You have to have fundamentals. Here's one of the rules that's very important on penalty killing. So, again, puck will come from the half wall. Most of the time, that's where it starts, all right? One of the key things about power play, most teams will want to set up the umbrella, all right? For me, you must try to deny the umbrella as much as possible. So that's why if the puck has moved up, in this uh, defense, we've got the puck starting to walk and came back this forward, we want to make sure as a forward that we push him back to get the back puck to the half wall. Obviously, once that's done, this guy has to come back to the dot line, to, with, his, with his stick in the right direction towards the middle of the ice to take away anything through the middle. This defenseman's responsibility is to play this 2 on one So again, stick. You know, we talk about sticks. They're very important to be in the passing lane. So if they do make this play here, you got to make sure that you cut this guy off to go to the net. That's your responsibility. A lot of times teams will try to stretch that defenseman. This four will start to come up. This deal start to move this way. Obviously, the four now has to move, right? This defenseman is going to be able to stretch out this way. We don't want that. You want to make sure your defenseman will take no further than the dot line because once you're stretched out, that's what they want to do. They bring you up. Now they spring the puck down low. Now they've got the two-on-one created. Maybe with a defenseman back door, forward popping out, so they got this option. You got this option to attack and also this option here. So this defenseman on the puck side, you must stay below the dot as much as possible. Do not push yourself up to the top of the circle. Well, then you're going to say, well, what about him if he's starting to attack in here? That's where your four will come in and help you out. Again, with a good stick, denying this play here to this defenseman. I mean, it's a short version of penalty killing, but these are very important stuff that goes on. You know, again, they're going to start showing back door. This forward is responsible for the back door. If they have a slot play, this guy is just going to pop out from the front of the net for this play here. This defenseman has to pop out with him. Now, a lot of coaches will say, well, stay in the slot and if the forward will be responsible for the guy that's popping out. Well, for me, it's a bang-bang play. It's very difficult for this guy to get back. 
So this way, there's no gray area. If the guy backs out for this play here, your D is right on top of him, right away. And obviously, this guy has backdoor. Hope you guys understand what I mean by that. But um, hopefully, that answers your question. Yeah, and we do have um, a lot of different types of penalty kills on icehockeysystems.com. Um, some more videos with Dennis, too. We have some diamond penalty kills, things like that. It would take a long time to go over everything, but um, it, it is a great question. Check it out. Uh, something I forgot to mention, we are giving everybody free demo access to Blueprint. So anybody that's been on the webinar, we're going to send you an email with a free login. You can check out all of our content, see how it works, see how easy it is to create a practice and recommend practices. So um, definitely check those out. We did have another couple questions coming in. Um, one was asking if you can use Blueprint as a coach. So Blueprint is meant for organizations, so directors can funnel down to coaches and coaches can kind of share with each other. If you're just an individual coach, we definitely recommend Ice Hockey Systems. So you're more than welcome to sign up. Um, shoot us an email, we can get you get you a login for that. Um, so that's, that's that question there. Another one we had is, um, we had a question emailed from Meredith coming in asking, are there any tips for coaching highly skilled players. So Dennis, you have uh, that's an answer a great, for that? That's a, great, that's a great question. Here's here's what happened. And I know because I've been there, I've had players that I've coached that are very high skill. And I've been myself a player that was uh, had some pretty good skill when I played. So a lot of times those guys, they're treated a little different than the other players. It shouldn't happen, but let's face it, that's part of the part of hockey, I suppose. You hope as a coach that you treat everybody equally, even to your best players. You use them more of as an, as an example. The only thing that you can't do to your best player, even though you're mad at him or you're not happy the way he's played or he's worked, is to embarrass him. One of the things that you could do is, because your best players most likely you should have them play together at all times. Um, not that your other players don't mean any of your team, because role players are as, as important as your as your skill players, but. You cannot sit your best player. You cannot have him sit on the bench for a period or two. I don't think that's the right way to to uh, to handle the situation. I think there's always a solution to every situation. But you could serve, put them down in the third line or fourth line, depending on how many lines you play, how many times, how many kids you have on your team. And you can really not take him off the power play because if he's your, your best player, by taking him off the power play, you're going to hurt your team. But what you can do is put him down on the second unit. Never send them out in the first unit. Put them on a second unit. Now, there has to be a reward and there has to be accountability to win championships or become good teams or also be, also become leaders. So it's one way to teach your young players, to, uh, the good ones especially, to, to be part of the team. You know, you always emphasize about team. This is a game that uh, can be played together. I mean, it can't be played alone. It's got to be played together. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, you know, skill players sometimes are tough to handle, but I think that's one way to do it. But you cannot sit those guys. You've got to play them. Hopefully that answers your question. All right. Thanks, Dennis. So we're going to wrap this up. Um, the last thing we have to do, we're giving away $1,000 um, to, to somebody that's on the webinar right now. So I'm just going to share my screen real quick. Um, let's see. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have everybody's name in random.org. Um, I'm going to hit randomize. The first prize we're giving away is the $1,000, and we're going to do it again. That's for an autographed jersey from Dennis. Um, so whoever's number 18 on this, that's Dennis's number, um, is going to win the $1,000. So I'm click randomize. Number 18 is Chris Boudry. So, Chris, we'll get in touch with you. Congratulations. Uh, you just won $1,000, number 18. We're going to do it again for um, the autographed Dennis Savard jersey. And that is going to be, looks like Colin Flynn. So, congratulations, guys. Um, you won $1,000 in autographed jersey. So, um, just want to thank everybody else again for uh, joining the webinar, taking time out of your day. Um, we really appreciate it. And uh, if you have any questions at all, um, feel free to, to email me, chris at icehockeysystems.com. Call me anytime, day or night, 716-713-3129. We're here to help you guys. Um, we want you, your players to learn the game of hockey, play it the right way, 
we want you guys to teach it the right way. And um, really, thanks for joining us. We hope to do a couple more of these webinars in the near future. And uh, any questions, let us know. Dennis, anything no, else awesome. to say? Thank you. All right. Ladies, gentlemen. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.